We get to do really tangible things that make a difference. Sometimes it makes a difference in uh, one family's life. Sometimes it makes a difference in a whole village and hundreds of kids, hundreds of adults, and kind of everything in between. We've assembled volunteers here this week in Gambella from all over the world. They've come from Asia, and they've come from Europe, and they've come from the United States, and they're helping the people of this village. It's amazing what volunteers can do just in one week. Uh, in one week, people have helped build a schoolhouse. Uh, volunteers have helped establish relationships with the water district so we can have irrigation water and drinking water for villages like this in northern Kenya in the future. Uh, they fixed a watering tank for animals so the herdsmen here can water their animals and earn money watering other animals. They've played with kids from the school day after day after day and taught them English and helped them with their handwriting. Uh, we helped the women of the village build chicken coops for an income production project of raising chickens and selling chickens and eggs. We've demonstrated a brick making machine out of the fine soil they have here so they can make money with bricks. Lots of things like this. Finally, we got a clinic building built. We're inaugurating the clinic today uh, by having a big health care day for all the people of the village and we have a couple nurses with us who are training our local health committee in this village how to look at people and help them with their health. They are the forgotten people, the poorest of the poor in this area of Kenya. And then, so yesterday we had an open clinic day and Hebe, one of the other nurses on the trip, we did assessments on everybody, blood pressures, um, demographic data, basic background, things like that. And it was really great. This is, was built with the intention to, to house uh, medical supplies um, for the village people because for the time being, um, village people, if they need medical assistance, have to walk 15 kilometers to the nearest town, which takes, you know, three or four hours and then 50, another 15 kilometers to come back. And that causes huge problems. There was, that, in fact, a story um, not long ago of a, a baby who was... Um, bitten by a cobra in the village and for situations like that it's critical to, to have our medical assistance um, on site. So we have created and, and built this, this clinic. At least some of them have known what it means to be loved, what it means to be cared for and they appreciated everything the short term team did for them and we really want many more people to come and help the needy and the poor people of northern Kenya. Not only in Gambela but there are several hundred and thousand villages in northern Kenya still under the same condition, under the same problem. So we really love many, many more to come. Welcome to Cabela 03. I'm Jeff Power with Global Hope Network. We are in uh, Ethiopia and we're west of the capital, Addis Ababa. We're in the town of Waliso, where Global Hope Network is focusing its first project to be a model project for the country. The town of Waliso is one of the poorest towns in Ethiopia, and it's divided into neighborhoods, or cabelas, four neighborhoods. We're in the, uh, the most hurting neighborhood of Waliso. It's called Cabela 03. Uh, we have a partnership here with a local organization and with several churches. And the idea is we want to create uh, a model project for some of the worst off families that are uh, orphans and widows and AIDS affected families and so on here in Maliso. And if we can demonstrate the ability over the next several years to help them get healthy and help them have income production and rise out of some of the abject poverty, it can become a model for a lot of other towns and a lot of other neighborhoods in Ethiopia. That's what we're hoping. Um, so this project is starting off where our local leaders with these churches have selected 30 families. We're going to build a cooperative plot where they can have income production by raising chickens and goats and some uh, agricultural cash crops. And we've selected two of those families that we're starting off with volunteers this week uh, to build a house behind me. So this house will actually house two families. Uh, today's the first day, <laughs> so we're getting rolling. Uh, we have volunteers here from Asia and Europe and the United States, and uh, we're just going to see what happens, see how the week goes. It was an awesome learning experience working alongside local people. We helped dig holes to put the foundation of the sticks that they used to, to build the structure of the home. We also um, were able to get involved in, in nailing together wood or sticks together to, to create the structure as well. 
it's such an honour to be part of um, helping to build um, you know, a couple of houses for t two families that are affected by HIV. I've had this incredible opportunity to sit with women that are HIV affected and um, knowing their stories is very deep. I feel really strongly that if you don't have healthy women, you don't have healthy families, and then you don't have healthy villages. Finding them in the kind of despair and the fact that the women do not, even when the women have HIV, the women are the last ones to get the medication. So um, my, my desire is to be able to be about health teaching, number one, helping to encourage bringing information to them and um, about transformation, if there's ways that we can bring both products, if possible, help, if possible, to serve alongside of those that are already serving those women. Some of them are dying at a very young age, and we can prevent that. Uh, many of the children need the uh, tender loving care, the TLC, that uh, many of us uh, who don't have children of our own can give. They need funds and they need people to come who aren't afraid to get their hands dirty. The gentleman who's produced this chicken farm has managed to uh, turn his own business around from producing a narcotic called CHAT to now producing chickens and eggs and it's a thriving business. He's doing good for the community instead of the bad things for the community and his business is growing. He's also helping his neighbors who produce CHAT to consider stopping doing that and uh, follow his example. Our mentality here in Walisu is to help the people that we're working with, our local partners, to enable some of the HIV positive families to have a cooperative effort very similar to this. An investment on your part to help these families will help the whole town of Walisu and help them go in a whole new direction economically. <laughs> These projects that are happening locally in these countries, they're, they're such good projects led by such good people, and we need your help. We'd be honored to ask for your help in these projects, for you to invest some way in helping these works in Kenya and in Ethiopia and in countries like this. And uh, every dime that you can put towards something like this will go very directly into the villages and uh, right into projects that are helping people. Uh, if you can come and invest a week or two with us on one of our short-term teams, you can put your hands and your heart and your mind to work and relationally be with people here and help the work progress that way. You can gather friends and uh, spread the word through our website and get people together and, and host a dinner party perhaps and find ways to talk about the stories of the tangible things that are happening in this village. But would you help us? We need your help, we'd be honored to have your help, and it would accomplish fantastic things for some of the poorest of the poor in some of the most forgotten parts of the world. Thank you for considering helping. <laughs>